What's good everyone, Hanky is back, and today I have a lot to cover about my Infinitus Tales theory, as well as addressing some counter-arguments. Now, I understand that this is a pretty far-fetched idea, and frankly, not all of you appreciated it, so I'm here to explain a little more. If you haven't seen the first part of this theory, link's in the description. Go watch it now because none of this is going to make any sense if you don't. But before we dive in, let me say one thing. Watch the whole video before you try to debunk this. I lost count of how many people tried arguing something that I already addressed. I also need to give a huge thanks to Fox Cordova 17 for sharing his blog post with me, which went way deeper into the theory than my initial video did, and actually gave me most of this evidence. So I'll have that linked in the description as well. Anyways, I've kept you waiting long enough, so let's get started. First of all, let's address some of the common counter-arguments. Exhibit A. But Hanky, Tails and Infinite appear in the same cutscene. They can't possibly be the same character. Ah, shit, I never realized that. Well, guess this is debunked. Listen, I already explained this before, but remember that I'm not saying Infinite's the good Tails that we see in the cutscene. Assuming you already watched the initial video by now and understand that I'm saying Infinite is a different version of Tails, these two can easily coexist in the same dimension because Classic and Modern Sonic are able to do this just fine. Exhibit B. But Hanky, Tails has two Tails and Infinite only has one. While this is an interesting theory that Infinite is actually Tails, I see absolutely no logical proof that this leads to be the case. Sure, the tail is there, but the only that's only there's only one of them, and Infinite is a lot older than Tails, and frankly, Tails would never hurt Sonic, so there goes that theory. I also mentioned this in the first video, but there's many ways that his tail could have disappeared. It could be Eggman manually modifying Tails' body, it could be the Phantom Ruby transforming him. There's plenty of things that could happen to that tail, and I'll go into a lot more depth with this later. But the one tail that's still left keeps the white tip and splits at the end, just like our friend over here. Exhibit C. But Hanky, the Game Gear Sonic games aren't canon. Frank is infinite, not Tails. Well, there's a lot of reasons why. One of them has to be is the Game Gear games are not canon. People don't understand that. First off, they haven't been proven to not be canon. But more importantly, Silver Sonics, which originated from the Game Gear, were used as a part of the Sonic Mania boss fight with Metal Sonic. To put this into perspective, an element of the Game Gear games was used in the most recent Sonic game, which oh by the way, is connected to forces. So not only is it possible to use Game Gear stuff in canon games, it's already been done, and used by Metal Sonic, which oh by the way, is a character that appears in forces. Connect the dots, guys. And finally, get a load of this. Uh, yeah, everything is canon, remember that. Everything is canon, nothing is forbidden. Life- I, Except of six, that's forbidden. What we've come to understand is that life is easier if you accept that everything is canon. Just smile and nod and roll with it. It's much better that way. So by this logic, the Game Gear games are canon, and even if they weren't, it doesn't stop them from tying into Sonic Forces. Now that I've dealt with those counter-arguments, let's get into some evidence that Fox Cordova and I discovered after I made the initial video. First off, let's look at a portion of the translated interview with Takashi Izuka, the head of Sonic Team. When asked about Infinite's origins, he responds with, quote, Although he wasn't always evil, he is not created from an abrupt incident like Chaos, but he is instead an animal character just like Sonic and the others, end quote. He wasn't always evil. This means that he was innocent at one point, until he was fused with the power of the Phantom Ruby. So Infinite is not an entirely new character. Not only that, but he said just like Sonic and the others. Not that he was an animal, not that he was like Sonic and the others, but at one point he was just like Sonic and the others until it all went wrong. There's also a couple things we can infer from how Infinite acts and what he says. For example, when he fights Sonic, it seems he knows every move that Sonic's trying to use on him. He can always see it coming, no matter how fast Sonic is. After kicking his ass into submission, Infinite says some very important lines, and even calls Sonic the little blue savior. The word choice they used couldn't be more clear. Sonic was supposed to be Tails' savior in the Game Gear games, yet he failed to do so. You may call me Infinite, not my name is Infinite. 
So the name Infinite was not the name he was born by, but the name he chose when he received the seemingly infinite power of the Phantom Ruby. Another thing we found was if Tails full name is Miles Tails Prower, we take out the Tails part and put Infinite at the front, we get Infinite Miles Prower, or Infinite Miles Per Hour. This would explain why they added this line. This guy is faster than Sonic! Infinite has absolutely no limits on his speed or his power as long as he has the power of the Phantom Ruby. Stick with me here because I'm going to explain what all of this means once I've laid out the evidence. There are also leaks for the plot of Sonic Forces. And although these are unconfirmed, this theory ties in perfectly with them if they turn out to be true. The leaks state the following, quote, Tails does not die in Sonic Forces, something else happens to him. Another character will die, however. You've seen Infinite before now, but it is not what you were expecting. There will be a major plot twist involving Infinite, end quote. It's pretty self-explanatory that this fits perfectly with the theory. Another thing we found is that Tails being used against Sonic was hinted twice in past 3D Sonic games when he was mind-controlled in Sonic Colors and roboticized in Lost World. But what exactly does all of this mean? When Game Gear Tails was fused with the Phantom Ruby and created by Eggman, he lost his main form of identity, his two Tails. Eggman didn't want Tails to remember who he was, Tails eventually figured out that he was being used against Sonic, Tails was able to snap out of it and fight for Sonic again. So without knowing his identity, Tails won't be able to realize he's being used. In fact, he might not even remember who he once was. As for the colors cutscene, it pretty much portrays exactly what's going on in Forces. Eggman is forcing Sonic to battle his best friend, except this time, he has unlimited power. Now let's talk about their tails. I made a mistake in the initial video saying that Infinite's tail was split into three ends. That's my bad, I took a weird screenshot and it looked like three tips because the fourth one is so much lower. Instead, there's actually five tips on Infinite's tail. The transformation process would mutate Tail's fur when it received the Phantom Ruby's power, and not only allow his tail to become more bushy and split into longer and more numerous ends, but allow these white hairs, or whatever they are, to stretch as far back as they do. Seriously, there's no way that would fit under the mask. Basically, all of the qualities that make Tails seem more mature and grown up would be caused by this power flowing through him. It also explains why Infinite's voice doesn't sound like Tails at all. However, all of this could just as easily be done by Eggman making these modifications manually. But what I'm saying is that Tails' body was changed to the point where he can't even recognize himself anymore. This is referred to in a line of Infinite's theme, only scars remain of who I was. Tails being from another dimension would explain why the good Tails can't identify Infinite on his little device thingy. Tails? I need to know what's going on with this guy! I'm trying, Sonic, but these readings are all messed up! Whoa. They don't make any sense! <laughs> because 1. It wouldn't be programmed to identify another version of himself, 2. It might not account for beings outside of the dimension it was created in, and 3. Notice this red glitchy effect around Infinite when he's present. Glitches don't go very well with machines. Another thing to notice is his ears. Although they look remarkably like fox ears, there's this weird spiral thing going on inside them. This symbolizes how the Phantom Ruby is too powerful to even let Tails listen to anyone except himself, and how his way of thinking is entirely different from the good Tails. So what about the sweet kicks? I'm not going to hesitate in saying that Eggman manufactured those, and due to all the crazy contraptions he's built over the years, it was probably a piece of cake for him. I know this is a lot to take in. It's complicated stuff and I don't really expect anyone to believe it right away. I already analyzed the lyrics to Infinite's theme in the first video, but to connect it with his theory, it's not just, oh, I've been hurt and I'm gonna get revenge. Especially towards the end, there's lines like, you live a lie and that's the difference in you and me, and it's only me and you who is gonna save you now. These are directly addressed to Sonic to expose his identity as a hero or a savior, when he couldn't even save the first character to be added to the Sonic series. Rather than simply taking over the world, Infinite's objective is to expose Sonic and turn the world into the exact opposite of what Sonic would want. But there's one last thing I want to cover. 
Wouldn't being captured or tortured for 25 years make Infinite's hatred for Sonic sort of justified? Well, not really, because Infinite and Modern Sonic are from different dimensions, right? So Modern Sonic wasn't the one who failed to rescue Infinite. But if Infinite's focusing on Modern Sonic, what happened to Game Gear Sonic? Had he already been dealt with? It appears that Infinite not only wants revenge on Sonic from his dimension, but every Sonic from all dimensions. Sounds a lot like Eggman's motives in Sonic Generation, the most recent Sonic game to be created by Sonic Team. Since Eggman created Infinite using Tails' body, they now share the same motives. But how did modern Eggman get a hold of Game Gear Tails? Well, the fans of Ruby can travel between dimensions, right? And Game Gear Tails was the only character that's been held captive all this time. So the fans of Ruby took modern Eggman to the Game Gear dimension because it needed a vulnerable host. And even though modern Eggman didn't initially know that the Game Gear dimension even existed, the fans of Ruby is self-aware, and it teleports itself wherever it needs to go to find a host. And so, Infinite was created in the place where Game Gear Tails had been captured for all these years. Before you click away from this, I just want to say feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed or got something out of it. I'll have a lot more Sonic content coming, so make sure you subscribe to avoid missing out. And if you really want to help out, you can share the video so more people can hear about this. Thank you all for watching, sources are in the description as always, and I'll catch you on my next video. See ya.